accepting the evil and ego death. This is an experience on DMT, and it was posted by a user named Apple Preserve on September 21st of 2010. When I ventured into my DMT trip, the last thing I was expecting was to ego death. I happened to have a readily available and reliable source of DMT, and I was bored one night, so I decided to do it. It was my second time doing DMT, my first trip being around 30 milligrams encephalated. This was a very mild trip and did not really excite me much of the potential of a DMT trip. I remember emotionally connecting with and communicating with the microwave and some brief breathing visuals, but not much else. Nothing very intellectual or deep. With this experience in mind, I decided to up my dosage to 55 milligrams, looking for a much more intense trip. Not necessarily ego death, but at least an intense DMT trip that I had read as associated with this drug. I ended up with a life-changing experience and possibly one of the best and worst drug experiences of my entire life. So I weighed out 55 milligrams and isoflated it all in one line. The burn is not instantaneous, but it hit me about 10 minutes later and got progressively worse until my trip was over. All I can say is water is definitely a DMT insufflator's best friend. Side effects of insufflation included burning in my nostril and throat from the drip, a watery eye on the side in which the DMT was insufflated, and a runny nostril. The burn was bad, though not nearly as bad as the burn from railing 8 milligrams of 2CE. All I can remember was repeatedly saying, why did I do this to myself? Then the intense and slightly scary patterns and psychedelic open eye visuals began occurring as well as a slight body buzz, and the desk I was sitting at was breathing with me amazingly. Each time I breathed in, the desk would expand and move more than I've ever seen before on any psychedelic, expanding inches at a time as though it were more alive than I were. I felt nauseous for about one minute and had an empty black trash can by my side in case I were to vomit. During the minute, I felt as though I would vomit. I held the trash can to my face and looked into it, preparing for vomit to expel from my mouth. Instead, when I looked into the trash can, it was as if I were going to be sucked into a black hole of death, evil, and darkness if I were to puke into it. In that moment, I felt as though an outside force was taking over my body, as if my entire body was no longer mine to control. Although I have read many ego death experiences on psychedelics and have friends who have recounted their experiences to me, I did not realize that the amount of DMT I had insufflated had the possibility to lead to ego death, and I was certainly not ready for it if it is even possible to be. Feeling entirely scared and unprepared, I convinced myself not to throw up and not to succumb to the black hole of darkness that was present in the trash can and came back up for air, breathing deeply. The moment I regained control of my body, all I could say was, I think I'm going to die and began frantically asking my friend slash trip sitter to assure me that people have done more DMT than I did and that I was going to be all right. It was the most physically painful thing I have ever been through and I was scared beyond belief. Little did I know this was just the beginning of the trip, and that in the remaining portion, I was in for the ride of my life. I needed to lie down and be in darkness. I had my friend turn off all of the lights and made my way to the bed in the room. Controlling my body, attempting to move and walk was also foreign to me. It was as if I had a 600 pound body, a massive amount of weight that I simply could not control. I felt like Bambi attempting to walk for the first time. Luckily, the bed wasn't too far, and I was able to make my way onto it, lying down while experiencing excruciating physical pain. I told myself that whatever it was that was going on with me, no matter how terrifying, I had gotten myself into this and at this point had no other option but to face it and come out on the other side. At this point, all the lights were off. I was in total darkness and had requested that my friend no longer speak to me. All I could do was to come to the trip to everything bad taken over my mind and write it out the best I could. I closed my eyes and immediately closed eyes visuals occurred. There were cloaked skeleton figures with piercingly evil red and green laser-like light projecting from their eyes, and I could tell they were there to take me for lack of better words. These were the most evil beings I'd ever experienced in my entire life, but I had no choice but to succumb to their evil and follow the steps they were leading me on. I covered my entire face and body with a black comforter to isolate myself from any grounding or worldly physical thing as I felt I had to go through this alone 
and depart from any existent reality. The next 15 or so minutes was the most intense trip I have ever been on in my entire life. At this point, I was physically writhing in pain, or at least I felt I was, and was crying like mad I was so scared. The, the cloaked beings and I were traveling through a tunnel of this evil green and red fluorescent piercing light flying past me, and it was as if I was on the world's fastest and darkest roller coaster, yet simultaneously felt as though I was stationary and not making any progress through this tunnel. All I wanted was to get through to the other side. Progressively though, this part of the trip, the piercing light and closed eyes visuals became less and less as the darkness was gradually taken over. And when I traveled through the tunnel, everything eventually turned pitch black when I reached to the point of ego death, as if all of the good and light had been taken out of the world. The emotional pain, however, was just about to begin. The first thing I had to do in this journey, on these steps that the cloaked creatures were leading me on, was to let go of every inhibition I had. And for me, mostly my physical insecurities and inhibitions. I could no longer care about something as trivial as my physical being or appearance. I had to let go in order to be consumed. I could no longer be in control of my physical body, so I let go, and I stopped caring about control as the snot and tears ran down my face. Then they had me focus in on the worst experience, the lowest feeling I had ever felt in my entire life. For me, this was a detailed experience with my dad that I won't get into. But let's just say that I had to focus on the intense amount of pain that I had felt at the time. The cloaked figures proceeded to flash previous psychedelic experiences of mine before me, each of which turned into pictures which were lit on fire by the laser like light shot out of their eyes, exploding and bursting into flame before me. These spirits were angry at me for avoiding ego death in this previous experience and assured me that the person who had saved me and grounded me back to reality, allowing me to avoid ego death previously, would not help me this time. Although the person had been physically around me during these previous experiences, and was not on this one, I felt that his actual physical presence had little to do with this. The cloaked figures continued to have me focus on my most painful experience, what had to be the worst amount of physical and emotional pain I had ever felt in my entire life. The whole time I was crying violently, breathing so sharply and heavily, almost as if I were physically dying by running out of air to breathe. Besides being emotionally painful, it was incredibly physically painful. Plus I could still feel the throbbing pain from the burning in my nose as if it were causing pain to my entire body. Some outside force was controlling my body and the only way I can describe it would be as the opposite of an exorcism. I began to have this conversation in my head with the cloaked figures about my father and all the pain and anguish I felt toward him. I focused on how awful he was how it was unbelievable that anyone could ever put their own flesh and blood, someone they created through the most intimate act through so much pain, how he was supposed to care for me, and how the pain he had made me feel was unbelievable and surreal in the worst way, reaching the conclusion that there was no good in him. I continued to have this conversation in my head with the cloaked figures, talking in circles, repeating the same thing over and over again, until the cloaked figures presented my dad, and I was now having this conversation directly to him getting more and more getting more and more progressively angry as i went on but that never reached a definitive end the next thing i had to do on this journey was to forget all the good in the world everything that could have possibly kept me grounded to a worldly reality anything that was possibly any remote good to continue living for i had to believe in this genuinely it couldn't be faked as the cloaked creatures could sense everything I had to forget that my friend trips into me and the room existed. And the friend who had saved me prior from ego death also had to be discredited as not having any good or anything worth living for. As it was thinking he was there for me and worth living for that had saved me from ego death previously. I had to focus on all of the bad qualities about him and turn him into something evil and believe that there was nothing good in him and that's why he couldn't and wouldn't save me. Soon a picture of him appeared and exploded as well, in the same manner as previously described. The cloaked creatures were right, and he could no longer save me. Then there came the final step. In order to complete this process, I had to admit everything I was thinking. Everything that was running through my head, by saying it out loud. It was as if I had to prove that I believed it all to these cloaked figures, but 
also to myself, and that the only way to do that was to say it. That was the ultimate way to succumb to their control, to have all inhibitions forgotten, to forget myself and my own ego. I knew it would seem crazy, but I had to do it. I had no other choice. So I began at the beginning, recounting to myself the issues with my father, saying it all out loud. It felt as though I was emotionally and angrily screaming it, though my trip sitter said he never understood a word as it was faint and whispered. Then I moved to admitting my friend was not good, but bad, and that he couldn't save me. I had to give up all the good I could think of that mattered to me and believe that it didn't exist. Finally, I had to say my final thoughts out loud. I said clearly and definitively out loud, but what my friend described as inaudible. It is all bad. There is no good left in the world. There is nothing good worth living for. Nothing good. Nothing. None. I felt this intense amount of emotion as I truly believed what I had just said. Then it all went pitch black and I died. I embraced everything evil in the world through my own painful life experiences so much so that I truly believed that good did not exist in the world and there was nothing worth living for in order to die. I had to believe it. And when I did, the journey with the cloaked figures was over and I died succumbing to the pitch blackness, losing the most ultimate control of life. Unfortunately, my friend's roommate came into the room right at this point, noisily and turned on the lights and the trip was lost. I never did get through to the other side of that tunnel. I never got to see what was on the other side of death or to attempt to recover from the scariest experience of my entire life. But I did ego death and it was amazing. The best way to describe it would be the most painful experience but the best learning experience I have ever gone through on any psychedelic. After effects including a feeling of rebirth as if everything were brand new and an intense new appreciation for everything in life, including small, insignificant things. It was totally worth it. The only upset was the unbelievably large amount of mucus being produced by my nose afterwards. Regardless of all the pain, I am glad I chose to rail a heavy dose of DMT. I don't think I could expect or be prepared for ego death. I had to just grab it by the horns as it came to me, which is what I did, and I'll never look back. That was terrifying. I don't necessarily know if that is ego death. What do you guys think? Was that a true ego death? Have you ever gone through anything similar? Let me know in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more trip stories. Check out audible484.com to help support the channel. Be happy, be yourselves, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.